coming up. He went from 90000 in debt to being the kingpin of a $20 million company. He shares his strengths and tries to overcome his weaknesses all on camera. Plus, did anything good come out of the financial bailout? The man who wrote the book and inspired a new movie tells all. And then it's time for a toast. We're showing you a rare champagne discovery. But once you hear the price tag, you may decide not to drink to that. I'm Mary Caracoli. Let's talk money. Welcome to the show. One of the ways you can control your own financial destiny is by taking ownership of your career, boosting your income through a job promotion, new clients, or even starting your own business becomes a lot easier when you've got a web of people who are quick to refer you. Don't believe me? Meet Dexter Lanigan. He went from 90K in debt to becoming a millionaire all in just a few years' time and without the help of a lottery ticket but he did have the help of good business relationships. And now he says he is ready to do even more and is willing to let you in on his weaknesses in order to get there. Dexter Lanigan started his career as a carpenter. After nearly a decade of making a good living in his trade, he was socked with $90,000 in medical bills for his young daughter. Going to the children's hospital every other week, seeing two specialists, and... uh, when she was born, she had emergency surgery down at Children's Hospital, and um, then the bills came. Specialist visits are not covered. He needed more money than even the most aggressive work schedule could provide. I worked in the union from 7 to 3.30. Now I go to night work and then work at people's, do people's basements, do whatever I can to make extra money. I just kept on working and working. Got, got a real good name for myself. Um, doing good quality work, do what I say, say what I do, and and, um, and now we're going on nine years later. And uh, every year the company has grown and grown. Dexter is no longer drowning in debt. Last year his company earned nearly $20 million. But this rags to riches story is far from over. Work and family is my life. And um, obviously my family first, but you know um, to make the family comfortable and happy. I need to create relationships and get out there and and hustle. To make it happen, he says he needs to meet more business owners who need his services. This business is is a very tough business. So, you know, I don't know if tomorrow is going to be the end. So I got to look at it like every day is the last day. And that's really what you have to work, you know, just that you're you're creating that next day. You're creating that next job. And um, that's that's really what we do every day, trying to get new customers, new clients to work for, and just getting our name out there. That is what today is all about. Business relationship expert Jolene Jaworski is coaching Dexter on how he can start creating those relationships at a business event. I actually have three key items for you to remember today. Okay. Mindset, content, and behavior. Simple enough, but he knows Jolene will be watching and grading his performance. How do you feel you did? It was great. Was there anything that Jolene said to you today that was in your mind as you were in the room? Um, Again, just to just to be confident about yourself, and I mean, just you know, the whole um, just being relaxed. And again, it's it's not that you're you're going to strike a deal today. And it's you know, it's it's a long term relationship. This this whole. uh, DCA. You got to strive at it. You got to just be consistent, you know, persistent, and um, you know, hopefully one day it'll, it'll all pan out. But Jolene had the benefit of watching Dexter's actions in our edit booth. All of his words and gestures were under the microscope. He seems very stiff. Unfortunately, he was looking around the room a little too much, and that portrays the, you know, the image of I don't really care what you're saying to me. I want to know who else is in the room. Okay, how about this? I'll give you one of my cards. <laughs> I got it in my hand. Giving a card immediately, some people might think that that's very businesslike. That's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people appreciate getting a card because you remember their name. You look at it. It's it's kind of a mnemonic device. People can look at it and um, help remember somebody's name. So it's not always a bad thing to give a card immediately upon introduction. And he's at a business type of function that... That's expected. It's not like he's at a soccer game and he's doing that. Correct. Correct. You're 100% right. The environment you're in really dictates your behaviors. 
Dexter found some familiar faces. Oh, you did? I I know. I'm like, I'm gone. It's actually a very good clip to show because it shows what happens when you get to that next level of relationship. You know, you, you can talk more candidly and you can talk in a much more jovial sense. And when that happens, your the values and the benefits you get from relationships at level at that level become you know more plentiful. After watching a half hour of Dexter in action, Jolene's final grade? I would probably say a C, C minus. Um, I, I think there's a lot of things he has the ability to work on, and I, I know Dexter, you know, as a whole, is a very relationship-driven person, so I, I, I appreciate the fact that he didn't, you know, in not one of these conversations did he go in and just throw up about Dexter and, you know, just, you know, bombard someone with, hey, this is my company, and this is what I do, and this is me, me, me. Not once did he do that. So I think he did a very good job of you know, keeping it about the other person. But I definitely think there's a lot of cues um, that he didn't take from the beginning, the few tips that I gave him in terms of keeping the content more um, personal. I have learning to do, and I'm new to the group, and um, maybe every little, every breakfast we go to, I'll get a little bit better. The Jolene standards. Jolene says no matter how many rungs you've already climbed on that ladder to success, it always helps to stop and take stock of your relationship skills. But one word she does not like to use is networking. I am like the anti-networker. I was always that person who was terrified of going into rooms of 250 people. 90% of our population has this fear of, you know, being in a room where nobody knows you and you, it's uncomfortable. It's not a fun situation. What I've found is just through true relationships and truly being yourself, it can be fun and it can be comfortable. Um, so I, I guess my background is really just life. Um, you know, being brought up in, in a family and being brought up in an environment where people truly care about the person next to them. They're not looking at, okay, am I going to be nice to this person because that's going to pay me, you know, dividends and I'm going to, you know, get a new job or get a new customer because I'm being nice to this person. No, you're nice to them because that's how humans should be. They should be nice to, to each other. That is what the true definition of relationships is, is, is just, you know, looking out for those around you and it's going to come back to you. I mean, you grew up in, in a situation where it's a little unusual for some people. You have famous dad, right? You probably, every time you guys would go out, people would talk to you. Was it watching how your parents handled that? I was brought up watching, you know, my parents and, you know, my father be so warm and cordial to anyone who come up and ask, you know, can I get a picture? Can I get an autograph? Sure. You know, he, he, I'm sure in some times would get a little annoyed. I'm, I'm eating dinner with my family and someone's coming up and bothering us, but he knew that you, you don't know who that person is. You don't know what, what, um, stopping for two seconds to sign an autograph or take a picture is going to do for that person. So if you if you truly are always looking out for the other person, it's not always about you. Again, it's not about you. This person, um, you know, I could make their day by by spending two seconds to sign an autograph or take a picture. So yeah, being around it and just seeing how my parents interacted with anyone. Um, who came into their lives, whether it was a total stranger, someone in their businesses, or someone in their personal life, they treated them all with, you know, respect and compassion. Having the deeper relationships, is there really a financial benefit to it? Absolutely. There, the financial benefit is beyond description. Can the benefits truly be, uh, you know, measured in, in cash? Sure. Um, if you're looking at terms of um, customer acquisition and, and um, new member retention or a new client retention, um, if you're looking at all those things, sure. But the benefits go far, far beyond that. All of those relationships that you have in your life are going to pay tremendous benefits um, you know, within every aspect of your life, whether you're running a business, looking for a job, you know, trying to find a romantic partner, whatever it is, um, the values are endless. That's great, because I think a lot of us don't really go that far. We think it's just the client, it's just making the sale, but it really runs a lot deeper. It's the sales that come from that sale down the road that may be 10 times just that one sale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the fact that you hear about an opportunity that someone else may never even hear about because you have those relationships. You bring up a great point. It's that, that access to private information. Um, people aren't disclosing or may not be sending out a press release or buying an ad um, 
um, to tell you about something that's going on in their business. But if you have that relationship with them, you're going to naturally find out about it and you're going to have the inside track because you had access to that private information. Again, whether it's in your business, you know, great examples are looking for jobs. You know, a lot of people are looking for jobs these days. Um, you're not going to find them on job boards online. Most companies aren't even posting it. You may even find out about a job before the company even knows that they're hiring for that job, but you find out there's a need and, and you had that inside information that you don't get um, without a relationship. What are some very efficient ways for us to reinforce old relationships and make new ones? One of the easiest ways is called pinging. Think about texting, sending quick emails, um, you know, picking up the phone. Those are all technology things that take uh, five minutes or you know, a text takes 30 seconds to text someone. One of the other ways that we like to encourage um, creating relationships or maintaining relationships is called grouping or um, blending. So think about the things that you do in your life and how can you bring someone into that. So blending, for instance, if you sit on um, a, a, a volunteer board or a charity board, invite someone that you're trying to build a relationship to join you. So taking the activities you already have in your life and, and inviting people to be a part of that. Jolene says, look at old school networking as a transaction. It's a one and done. On the other hand, relationship building done right can pay dividends for a lifetime. Up next, there isn't anyone I know that wasn't impacted by the financial crisis. Is the worst behind us? I asked the man who wrote the book on the crisis and inspired a new movie. And later, do you know someone who has a hard time with one little word, commit? From bosses to boyfriends, what to say to the people you hope will sign on the bottom line. Get money.